Hey guys, thank you again. It's Wonderless Mommy. Welcome back to another episode and tips and tricks. Today we're talking airports, like I said. I know that a lot of us get stressed out when it comes time to get on that plane and get to that airport and we just don't know what to do and we just cringe. I know I've made so many mistakes in the past, so that's why I'm bringing you this video too. one you're probably gonna be like why did you include this one number one is be on time be on time at the airport rule of thumb is if you're flying an international flight you have to be there at least two hours before if it's a domestic flight be there at least one hour before if you're a stress bug like me be there three hours before just to make sure that you're there on time okay number two numero dos curbside check-in now if you must check in a bag when you pull up to that airport whatever it is you pull up in it could be uber your friend whoever it is once you pull up just check if they have curbside check-in because that will save you a lot of time from having to go inside the terminal and check in your bag sometimes you're strapped with time if you don't follow rule number one and you get to that terminal and then the lines are just like out of this world. So that would eliminate it. And then sometimes there could be a charge you just have to ask and then you might wanna give them maybe even a tip, okay? Number three, check in online. I can't stress this enough. Check in online, this will eliminate a lot of things number one it will eliminate you having to stand in line for the longest time especially if you're strapped for time again not following rule number one and you can just go straight through especially if you did the curbside check-in or if you don't have bags to check in number two you're sure that you have a place on that plane just because you bought the ticket does not mean that you have a seat on that plane no ma'am no you don't Sometimes airlines overbook. So by you checking in online, you make sure that you already have a place on that plane. And number three, you can even pick your seat. And one of the websites that I like using is seatguru.com. And that allows me to look at what the best seat on that air, specific airplane is. Okay, so you wanna check in online for sure. Number four. Under no circumstances, if you have a connecting flight, don't ever, 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 don't ever book a connecting flight that is less than an hour long. Why, you may ask? Hmm, I don't know. Life happens. What if your flight is delayed? What if it's late? Anything can happen. What if that airport of the connecting flight that you're going to, what if it's like a mini city and it takes forever to get from the terminal that you land into to the next terminal that you need to be into, okay? I.e. Charles de Gaulle Airport. You need to take like a train through that freaking airport. Number five, numero cinco. Try not to buy black luggage or a black suitcase. Why? Because that's the most common suitcase. When you get to that carousel and you get your bag, you're gonna see a sea of black luggage and it's gonna be harder to get yours or pick yours out of that seat. So if you do have a black luggage, what you can do is put a string or something recognizable on that suitcase. That way you can distinguish it amongst the other ones, okay? If you already have that. Number six, numero seis. I hope you guys like the Spanish lesson too, okay? Numero seis, seis. Okay, so bring a compact outlet plug. Why, why should you bring that? Why? Because you're gonna need it. And um, you don't know how many times I've gone through the airport and I see a lot of chargers where I can plug my stuff in, but everyone's using it. And they're there for like hours and hours and hours, checking their answer, everything. And I'm like, really bro, really? And then I find one and then I find one and I go and I'm like, yes, victory. And then it doesn't work. 
So that would avoid all of that. If they are all taken up, you can just ask someone if they want to share and you might even make friends. Hey, that's another little added plus tip in this one. Make friends at the airport. Some of our best friends we've met at the airport. I.e. if you're watching this, Kate and Rich, when we went to Bali, we met you guys at the Shanghai airport. Like such cool people from Canada. So I'm just saying make friends. They'll be lifelong friends. Then you'll take me first seven take screenshots take screen oh wait sorry i forgot siete take screenshots of absolutely everything take screenshots of your passport take screenshots of your boarding passes take screenshots of the addresses of the destination and the hotels and the hostels whatever wherever you're staying at that way if you don't have wi-fi in that airport you know where you're going take screenshots or pictures of where you park at the airport um, if you are driving, um, take screenshots of, you know, your dog's face. You'll thank me later because you're going to miss him. Okay. Point is take screenshots of everything. You never know when you're going to need it. Okay. Number eight, numero ocho, take an empty water bottle. Um, and take an empty water bottle because they're not going to allow you to take water through security and anything to drink or eat at the airport. It's just insanely expensive. So this will reduce all of that cost it's good for the environment because you're just reusing it now once you get into the airport through security you can just refill it and they have water stations literally in every airport okay if you are don't just take water take snacks too you can take food um it's very expensive at the airport so if you're going to be there for like three four hours take food um if you're going with kids you need to take food and snacks I, I can't express this enough, okay? Because your kids are going to want everything they see and you're going to be there for a while. So basically take everything that your child will want at the airport. Candy, snacks, you know, whatever. Toys, their favorite book, puzzle, whatever, okay? So just do that. Even with the Wi-Fi, if you don't have Wi-Fi or you have to pay for Wi-Fi on the plane, you can just download movies off of Hulu or Netflix that don't require the Wi-Fi. Okay. Numero nueve, number nine. Okay. If your flight gets delayed or it gets canceled, you're probably going to be in line with a lot of angry people, a lot of cranky people. You're probably going to be cranky. If you're traveling with kids, it's going to be like quadruple zillion cranky and just like everything's going to be bad. So what I suggest is while you're standing in line with all those people, you get on the phone with customer service and you might be able to get through them first. And then if you have an, um, another adult or more adults, they can get on the phone too and see if you can get through um, quicker, okay? Number 10, numero 10, okay? If you have a connecting or layover flight and you're going to be staying at the airport for longer than like three hours, go find out about the airport lounge, okay? You're going to thank me later. And if you have to pay for it, I think it's like $35 to $80. It depends. Sometimes it's worth it. And then if you do have a credit card, you can ask them if they give you added perks and access and you can have free food, free Wi-Fi, free lounge chairs where you can sleep and be nice and comfortable. Quietness, coffee, beer, beer, coffee. Did I say that again? Yeah. And sometimes even showers. So ask about the airport lounge, see how much it is. If it makes sense to you, um, it might be a good investment. And then if you have a credit card, definitely add about the added perks. Number 11, numero 11. Now, if you cannot go into the airport lounge and you don't want to pay for it and you do have a long layover and you have to sleep at the airport, which sucks, I've done it before, um, you can always go by the airport lounge and then try to see their Wi-Fi. Go on a website where, and I think it's Nomad Joe, I'm not sure, um, but you can look it up. Nomad Joe, I believe, uh, gives you what username and password you need to go into that Wi-Fi. And then once you're in, you can even go on a website that's called sleepinginairports.com. And then it tells you what is the best place to sleep at, at that specific airport that you're in. Um, what are the best uh, places to eat, the cheapest places, all of that good stuff. So that may, might make sense to look into, okay? Number 12, numero 12. If you find yourself being late and stressed out because you're going to miss your flight and you're going through security and you're like, oh my God, they're calling my name already. Tell someone, tell someone, have a voice. 
you need to ask someone. The worst they can say is no, but don't be that sucker that doesn't say anything and just misses their flight, okay? And worse, gets stuck or has to pay for that flight, another flight to get to their destination. So tell someone, and this goes for everything else. Um, you know, some people are really helpful, especially if you're nice to them and they have powers. They can push you to the front. Number 13, numero 13, bring a pen. Bring a pen. This is, this is, this is another obvious one, but there's going to be important forms, declarations that you're going to have to fill out, not only on the plane, but at the airport. And it can really be a delay of like five to 10 minutes when time is of essence at the airport, you looking for a pen. So always bring a pen. And in that same sense, um, put the pen in like Ziploc or whatever kind of pouch. I usually take it in one a pouch like this, where I put my passport, my boarding passes and everything that I'm going to need at that airport. Usually they're going to ask you for your boarding pass and your passport at least two to three times. So you don't want to be that person that delays everyone having to take everything out. So just have it with you. Number 14, numero 14. On the contrary, a lot of people tell you not to get up to board when they're barely calling group like A, B. I always think differently. There's been times when we've gone last and we haven't had room on the overhead bins to put our stuff. So then we had to put it under and that takes our leg room away. So what I would say is try to get on as soon as possible. If you have kids, you have even more reason to get on faster. Do everyone a favor. If you have kids, you have more of baggage, like literally baggage, more bags. So you want to get on that flight, number one, to secure your overhead bin. And number two, so that you can get situated with your kids because it's going to take longer. You're going to have longer to go to the restroom as well instead of just getting there and then the captain saying, okay, we're taking off. Okay, and your kids being like, mommy, I have to pee right now. Number 15, numero 15. Um, bring all your hygienic stuff to the airport. Why? I don't know, because you're going to want to feel human. And I don't know, maybe because you're going to feel fodonga and funchies. If you don't know what that means, funchies is like, ugh, icky, yuck, yucky. So I don't know about you guys, but on a flight, I feel like my breath is always kicking. So number one, you want to bring toothpaste and a toothbrush. And then you can brush your teeth wherever you go, um, especially on long layovers. You want to do that and bring hand sanitizer. It's really dirty on the plane. So the last thing you want to do is touch dirty things and get sick. And number three, just bring like deodorant and stuff. You're going to need it because you're going to be kicking. Okay. <laughs> number 16, the says to that same effect, aside from being, bringing all your hygienics, bring extra clothes. Why? Because you're going to feel icky, nasty, you know? And then especially if you have a connecting flight, once you get to that connecting flight, especially if you're you're on a long haul flight, let's say to like Asia, Europe, wherever, people there are going to be nicely dressed because they just got to the airport. And then you're going to feel like a caveman, cavewoman. So you just, no, no, take extra clothes. Don't just take extra clothes for the airport. Take extra clothes, like two pairs of extra clothing in case your bags don't make it. That way you have at least something. If you're going somewhere tropical, take bathing suits, okay? I made the mistake when I went to Cancun that I didn't even take a bathing suit in my bag. Sister, come on, what are you doing? And then my bags were somewhere, I don't know, and I didn't have anything I had to buy. So number 17, numero 17. Take your pillows and your blankets on the plane at the airport especially on long calls long layovers this is just self-explanatory it's super cold on the plane and at the airport and then not only that it can get uncomfortable so you want to feel as comfortable as possible especially at the airport you can use your blanket to cuddle up you can use it for your pillows number 18 numero 18 um be ready and do your research be ready and do your research of what you can take through security go on the tsa website go on your airlines website and see what um the maximum weight of your luggage can be what you can and cannot take as far as luggage what you're going to be charged for rule of thumb is uh, you're going to be taking liquids or gels do not take anything over three ounces or 100 ml security they will confiscate it okay so don't take your body splash, your Victoria's Secret body, spl uh, body splashes and stuff because 
they will make someone else happy and smelling good. Number 19, continuously check your gait and your boarding time, okay? It's my flights because they've changed my gait and I haven't gotten there on time, okay? Or I've been lollygagging or not listening. And you know, what you wanna do is even take a screenshot. Remember what I said, take a screenshot of everything. Take a screenshot of that big blue screen continuously go up and ask the the ticket agent hey is this the same gate listen up don't wear headphones and if you have someone with you maybe take turns wearing headphones i don't know or share them pay attention as well and then what i like doing when i get to the airport and start going anywhere else i go straight to the gate to see where it is okay and then that way i know some airports are like many cities and they're huge so you can be in one terminal and then leave the next and then they're calling your name and you're like stuck over here. So yeah, even set an alarm. Set an alarm, make sure that your phone, if you're in a different time zone, changes. The last thing you wanna do is think that you have more time than you do. Number 20, number 20, don't assume things. Don't assume anything. Don't assume that your flight's gonna get there on time and that you're gonna have enough time to connect. That's why you need longer connecting, anticipate things. Assume the things that you can take through security and just take anything, okay? Just don't assume, don't assume that you, you don't smell or that your breath doesn't smell, okay? Don't assume anything. <laughs> That's why I'm giving you all these tips. Number 21, numero 21. When going through security, um, when you're going through security, you want to usually go to the left line. By nature, people usually choose the right side. So the left side is normally le less crowded and empty. So if you're strapped for time, then you might want to go to the left. Okay, number 22, 22, my last and final tip, el ultimo. Choose your luggage wisely, okay? Choose your luggage wisely. I say this because I've had one time where I bought cheap luggage and I'm like, oh my God, this is so cute. Yeah, look at me. And then it freaking broke. And then I had to literally carry it like this because it was like one of those luggages and like carry it like this and just like look like that one person. So now what I do is we bought a really good backpacker's backpack and that thing has been a lifesaver. I mean, when we've been running through that airport, when we've had to catch flights through anything, when even when we've been backpacking with uh, my daughter and have her in the front and the backpack in the back instead of wheeling something. You can't have a backpack because you're just not into that. I would suggest maybe even the four wheels and just invest in a good four wheel um, suitcase. That way you have something that is durable and you can just take throughout. Um, anyways, I really hope that this helps you on your next trip. I hope that you guys don't stress out. I hope that you guys can anticipate all of the things, all of the externals that might happen to you. That way you have a stress-free and fun trip. Again, this is Wonderlust Mommy. And if you still don't feel confident about your next trip or going to the airport, remember what Damien and Mean Girl said. You go, Glenn Coco, you go. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this. If you like this video, please give it a large hug. Comment down below and please, please, please subscribe. Let's make this little baby into a toddler. I want a Wanderlust community where we can share our ideas and just be Wanderlusters. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, guys.